Yes. So Jennifer, we want to actually build a bridge here, and you'll do that by using the tools. The toolbar is right there on the left. You follow the cursor. You can see the first tool there is to drop joints in. The second tool is for, we'll, we'll, let, her, we'll let her drop the joints in as she goes. But uh, you can literally drop those joints in anywhere you want. Here's where I usually give my students a little quick tip. There is a, up on the top to the right, there's a grid. This is very helpful in placing those grids, but I always tell them to choose the smallest grid right now right before you forget it. That'll come in very handy a little later on if you need to move a joint a very small distance. So uh, Jennifer's now using that second tool, which will actually draw in. And you can see it's very it's just like any CAD-based program. She's building in the diagonals. And now she's putting the top cord in. Now you'll notice that Jennifer opted to go ahead and connect the two, to the two trusses. So the member in the middle there, that serves purpose. That's a choice she just made, a very important choice. What she did is she made that a continuous two-span truss, which means both of those spans work together the way the whole bridge does. Had she removed that, she would have two simple spans. Those two bridges would work the same, but independently of each other. Jennifer will leave that in there. So she wants a continuous span truss. As she was drawing in each one of the members, you'll notice to the right the chart to the right. The chart to the right is very important for everything that we do here. Every one of those uh, headings at the top of the chart, each one you can actually select on those members and you can choose It'll sort those columns. We started off with the default of one by 140 by 140 millimeter. Everything's solid bars, and everything's carbon steel. Let's run the load test to see how you did, Jennifer. So clicking on the load test, and I can tell already that the bridge will pass the load test. And I can do that by looking up at the status bar at the top. It shows an arrow pointing up on a green backfield. Had that failed, it would have shown a red backfield with a bar, white bar across it. Back to the drawing board, Jen. So we have a, uh, a bridge now that we're approaching $300,000. That's, uh, that's really good, and it, it passes, the, passes the test, but it won't get you very far in our state contest. $300,000 is not going to be competitive, and that's exactly why you guys want to teach the iterative process that we're talking about today, because you want your kids to be competitive. 